protons, you know, the building blocks of atoms, around this ring at near the speed of light and smashing them into each other, and they fly apart, revealing all the, all the constituents and other elements and, and energies that make up that matter in the universe. The researchers here hope to produce dark matter particles by accelerating the inside of atoms close to the speed of light around a 27 kilometer ring and then crashing them together. CERN is on our screens again, and this time it is for something very scary that has shocked scientists once again. During one of their recent experiments, an extremely unusual and unexpected event occurred leaving the scientists both baffled and concerned. Apart from defying the laws of physics, a greater part of the scientific community was thrown into a state of deep fear when an intrepid scientist raised an alarm about the unsettling possibility of the world being destroyed by the unimaginable threat that may have been unleashed during the event. If CERN has inadvertently unleashed a force that could destabilize the fundamental laws of physics, what kind of apocalyptic scenario could we be facing? Let's find out. Since its inception, CERN has been at the forefront of particle physics research, conducting experiments that aim to give us a better understanding of the universe, its origins, and how it operates. However, before the groundbreaking innovations CERN is known for, the organization identified and addressed several scientific challenges. One of the critical phenomena of interest was understanding the Big Bang the cosmic event believed to have led to the formation of the universe. This curiosity laid the foundation for many of CERN's subsequent discoveries in recent years. Long before CERN was built, many smart scientists were already trying to figure out the secrets of the universe. It all started in 1928. Paul Dirac was working on developing a mathematical description of electrons within the framework of quantum mechanics. His equations predicted the existence of a mirror image of the electron possessing the same mass but opposite charge. This particle became known as the anti-electron, or positron. However, it wasn't until several years later that the first experimental evidence of antimatter was discovered. In 1932, American physicist Carl D. Anderson observed the tracks of cosmic rays in a cloud chamber. He noticed a peculiar track that curved in the opposite direction to what would be expected for an electron. Here's what it looks like when charged particles pass through a cloud chamber. The chamber contains a vapor of alcohol placed inside a magnetic field. Anderson concluded that this track was produced by a particle with the same mass as an electron, but with a positive charge. This was the first observation of the positron, the first known antiparticle. Antimatter comprises antiparticles, which are counterparts to the particles that make up ordinary matter. Each antiparticle has the same mass as its corresponding particle, but possesses opposite charge and other quantum properties. Anderson's discovery of the positron led to a flurry of research in particle physics. It soon became evident that a corresponding antiparticle with an opposite charge existed for every known particle but the same mass. Following the discovery of the positron, scientists began searching for other antiparticles. In 1955, Emilio Segre and Owen Chamberlain at the University of California, Berkeley, successfully detected the antiproton, the proton's antiparticle, using the Bevatron particle accelerator. This discovery earned them the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1959. The quest for antimatter continued, and in 1965, the anti-neutron was discovered at the Alternating Gradient Synchrotron at Brookhaven National Laboratory by a team led by Bruce Cork. The anti-neutron is the antiparticle of the neutron. This discovery further confirmed the existence of antimatter and expanded the knowledge of antiparticles, but it didn't stop there. To further this course, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, got actively involved in the research and production of antimatter. This was what the world was waiting for, as it was just the beginning of the many mouth-gaping and even scary possibilities there were. What breakthroughs have CERN made in the world of particle physics? CERN's involvement in antimatter research can be traced back to the 1950s and 1960s, when particle accelerators became powerful enough to produce and study antiparticles. At that time, 
CERN focused primarily on studying high-energy collisions and exploring the properties of various particles. In the 1970s, CERN began developing the Large Electron Positron LEP, collider, which became operational in 1989. LEP was the most potent electron-positron collider of its time and was used to investigate a wide range of particle physics phenomena. The high-energy collisions at LEP allowed scientists to study the behavior of particles and their antiparticles in detail, contributing to our understanding of antimatter. In the 1990s, CERN's interest in antimatter intensified with the establishment of dedicated antimatter experiments. One notable project was the creation of the Low Energy Anti-Proton Ring, LEAR, which operated from 1982 to 1996. LEAR aimed to investigate the properties of antiprotons and antinuclei, paving the way for the study of antihydrogen atoms. CERN's commitment to antimatter research became even more pronounced in the 21st century, with the establishment of the Antiproton Decelerator, AD. In 2000, it provided a facility for producing low-energy antiprotons, enabling experiments on antimatter to continue. The AD has been used for various antimatter experiments, including creating and trapping anti-hydrogen atoms and exploring their properties and behavior. One of the most significant milestones in CERN's antimatter research came in 2010 with the formation of the Alpha Collaboration. The collaboration's experiments have contributed to our understanding of how antimatter interacts with gravity and electromagnetic fields. With each breakthrough, we get closer to understanding the nature of our universe and the enigmatic substance that seems to defy our conventional understanding of physics. And so, exploring the possibility that antimatter, a type of matter composed of antiparticles, may have a negative gravitational charge, and motivated by the baryonic asymmetry of the universe, they set out to work by first carrying out the Alpha experiment. The asymmetry between matter and antimatter then was still an unsolved mystery, and scientists at CERN were exploring various possibilities to explain this asymmetry. Baryons are particles composed of three quarks, such as protons and neutrons. According to our understanding, the universe has abundant matter compared to antimatter. However, the fundamental laws of physics suggest that matter and antimatter should have been created in equal amounts during the Big Bang. The leading theory is, at the beginning of the universe, at the Big Bang, there were almost equal amounts of matter and antimatter. The two annihilated in the instant of the Big Bang. Additionally, the physicists considered the speculative idea that antimatter having a negative gravitational charge could provide a more straightforward explanation for the cosmological mysteries of dark matter and energy. Dark matter is an invisible form of matter that does not interact with light, but exerts gravitational effects on visible matter. In contrast, dark energy is the hypothetical force responsible for the universe's accelerated expansion. And so the notion that antimatter could fall upward, defying the standard downward pull of gravity, was one of the ideas being explored. Postulating that antimatter has a negative gravitational charge would mean that antimatter particles would be repelled by ordinary matter, and hence, they would move in the opposite direction of gravity. And if that were to happen, the consequences would have been too far-reaching for our planet. If antimatter were to fall upward, it would disrupt our understanding of gravity and the dynamics of celestial bodies. Disruptions to gravity and planetary dynamics may affect atmospheric conditions, climate patterns, and ecosystems potentially leading to significant changes in weather patterns, habitats, and biodiversity. Then, there is the most disturbing, which is energy release. Antimatter annihilation reactions are highly energetic. If antimatter were to fall upward, it might result in uncontrolled or unintended release of energy. This could potentially lead to catastrophic consequences like destructive explosions or other hazardous events. This is how it works. In the hypothetical scenario, where antimatter has a negative gravitational charge and falls upward if antimatter particles were to encounter ordinary matter particles, they would still possess their negative gravitational charge and move against the force of gravity. When these particles interact and annihilate, the resulting annihilation will release a tremendous amount of energy. The energy released from matter-antimatter annihilation is incredibly high. In fact, 
It is one of the most efficient energy conversion processes known to science, and the energy released is thousands of magnitude greater than that from chemical or conventional nuclear reactions, which is a potentially powerful energy source equivalent to a nuclear explosion. So when this antimatter meets regular matter, a massive explosion will happen. The explosion would release very powerful radiation called gamma rays. These gamma rays can go through almost anything and harm living things and materials. They can cause genetic mutations, damage cells and tissues, and have long-term effects on our health. Not stopping there, the explosion could also cause a lot of damage to buildings and structures. Everything in the area would be destroyed by the powerful force of the explosion. It would be a scene of complete devastation. And the aftermath would also be devastating for the environment. The explosion would contaminate the surrounding area and cause long-term damage to ecosystems, water sources, and the delicate balance of nature. It would take generations for the environment to recover from such a catastrophe. Now this was really scary, but after the Alpha experiment, scientists were shocked to discover that the opposite of what they feared could happen was actually the result. The highlight was when the findings of CERN's Alpha experiment brought a vital revelation regarding the behavior of antimatter in a gravitational field. Initially, there was a prevailing opinion that antimatter would exhibit an upward movement when subjected to gravity as an anti-gravity effect. However, the Alpha experiment provided crucial evidence to the contrary. During the experiment, Researchers carefully observed the behavior of trapped anti-hydrogen atoms under the influence of gravity. The results were remarkable. It was found that the anti-hydrogen atoms behaved just like their matter counterparts, following the same downward trajectory in a gravitational field. This observation directly challenged the earlier notion of antimatter exhibiting anti-gravity effects. The Alpha experiment's findings supported the principle of equivalence between matter and antimatter in gravitational interactions. In essence, the experiment provided strong evidence that antimatter is subject to the same gravitational forces as ordinary matter, debunking the idea of antimatter defying gravity. This discovery has significant implications for our understanding of the fundamental laws of physics and the nature of the universe. It reinforces the principles of general relativity, which state that gravitational forces affect all forms of matter and energy equally, including antimatter. This finding was a major breakthrough for CERN as it paved the way for other experiments. And so they went into the next and created the LHC Large Hadron Collider. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, had several motivations for building the Large Hadron Collider, LHC. One of the primary motivations was the desire to deepen our understanding of the fundamental laws of nature. The LHC was designed to explore the fundamental particles and forces that make up the universe. By colliding particles at extremely high energies, scientists aimed to study the building blocks of matter and investigate the fundamental forces that govern their interactions. Additionally, the LHC was built to test and expand upon the existing theories of particle physics, notably the standard model. This model describes the known particles and their interactions, but has unanswered questions. By conducting experiments at the LHC, scientists hoped to verify the predictions of the standard model and discover new particles or phenomena that could challenge or extend our current understanding. Another significant motivation was the search for the Higgs boson, a particle associated with the mechanism by which other particles acquire mass. The existence of the Higgs boson was postulated but had not been observed until the experiments at the LHC, and boy did they hit their goals. The breakthrough started with the discovery of the Higgs boson. This discovery was a monumental achievement that marked the culmination of decades of theoretical and experimental efforts in particle physics. The Higgs boson was the last missing piece of the standard model, the theoretical framework that describes the fundamental particles and their interactions. The search for the Higgs boson was a massive undertaking that required the construction of the LHC, the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. By colliding protons at unprecedented energies, the LHC experiments, ATLAS and CMS, created the conditions necessary for producing and detecting the elusive Higgs boson. The discovery was announced on July 4, 2012, 
after analyzing the data from the LHC's first run. The experimental signatures observed by the ATLAS and CMS collaborations were consistent with a new particle with a mass of around 125 gigaelectron volts, GeV, matching the predictions for the Higgs boson. This groundbreaking discovery confirmed a crucial part of the standard model and opened up new avenues for exploration in particle physics. Also, the LHC has enabled scientists to perform precise tests of the standard model with unprecedented accuracy. By colliding particles at incredibly high energies, researchers can study the behavior of known particles and their interactions in detail. These experiments have provided experimental evidence that supports the predictions of the standard model and have helped refine our understanding of particle physics. One of the key achievements in this area has been the precise measurement of the properties and interactions of particles such as quarks, leptons, and gauge bosons. The LHC experiments have verified the existence and characteristics of these particles with remarkable precision, confirming the theoretical predictions of the standard model. Furthermore, the LHC has allowed researchers to study rare processes and phenomena that were previously inaccessible. These include producing and decaying heavy particles, such as the top quark and the W and Z bosons, and studying particle interactions at the highest energies achieved in a laboratory setting. The precision measurements and tests performed at the LHC have not only validated the standard model, but have also provided valuable insights into potential deviations or hints of new physics beyond the standard model. While the primary goal of the LHC was the discovery of the Higgs boson, it has also been instrumental in searching for new physics beyond the standard model. Despite the remarkable success of the standard model, it is widely believed that there must be a more fundamental theory that can explain phenomena that the standard model cannot account for, such as the nature of dark matter and the unification of all fundamental forces. By colliding particles at energies never achieved in a laboratory setting, the LHC experiments have been able to probe for new particles and phenomena that could point towards a more complete theory of particle physics. Even if no new particles or phenomena are discovered directly, the LHC data provides crucial information about the energy scales at which new physics may emerge, informing the design and development of future experiments and accelerators. These constraints have helped guide and shape the direction of future research and theoretical developments in particle physics. One of the remarkable achievements of the LHC has been the creation and study of a state of matter known as the quark-gluon plasma, QGP. This state of matter is believed to have existed in the early universe, just microseconds after the Big Bang, when temperatures were so high that the fundamental constituents of matter, quarks, and gluons were not confined within hadrons, such as protons and neutrons. The LHC has enabled scientists to recreate and study the properties of QGP by colliding heavy ions, such as lead nuclei, at unprecedented energies. These collisions create a hot and dense medium that allows quarks and gluons to move freely, mimicking the conditions of the early universe. The study of QGP at the LHC has provided valuable insights into the nature of the strong nuclear force which governs the interactions between quarks and gluons. Researchers have been able to investigate the properties of QGP, such as its temperature, density, and viscosity, as well as the mechanisms by which it cools and hadronizes forms hadrons. These studies have not only shed light on the early stages of the universe's evolution, but have also contributed to our understanding of the behavior of matter under extreme conditions, with potential applications in fields such as astrophysics and nuclear physics. Unfortunately, despite these advancements and discoveries, some scientists have raised concerns about the dangers the LHC may be causing to we humans and our planet at large which has raised the question, is CERN really the organization we think it is? Or is there something fishy going on undercover? We'll find out in a few seconds. What dangers are lurking in our planet? Due to CERN's experiments, we recognize that each new discovery or experiment may bring concerns about potential negative impacts on humans. However, the level of concern expressed by scientists about the experiments conducted at CERN has caught the attention of environmental and planetary advocates. And so, 
it's no surprise that people are feeling a bit more on edge and worried about what might happen next. First is the speculation that the LHC can destroy the planet by creating black holes. Black holes are mysterious formations in space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape their powerful pull. Ideally, black holes form when big stars run out of fuel and collapse. The core of the star collapses under its own weight, and the remaining mass gets squeezed into a very small and dense object. This object has such strong gravity that it creates a hole in space and time, which is why we call it a black hole. The scariest thing about a black hole is its event horizon, which is like an invisible boundary around the black hole. Once something crosses this boundary, it can never escape. It gets pulled into the black hole and can never come back out. The size of the event horizon depends on how much mass the black hole has, but proponents of this idea claim that the LHC's high-energy collisions could create microscopic black holes. According to their speculation, when particles collide at such high energies, the intense concentration of power and mass in a small region could potentially cause the formation of a tiny black hole. However, scientists have thoroughly addressed and debunked these concerns. According to calculations based on the theory of general relativity, even if tiny black holes were created at the LHC, they would quickly vanish through a process called Hawking radiation. This radiation, proposed by physicist Stephen Hawking, states that black holes emit energy and gradually lose mass over time until they eventually disappear without enough time to interact significantly with surrounding matter or grow in size. Furthermore, the energies produced at the LHC are much lower than what would be needed to create black holes that last long enough to pose any threat. The energies in LHC collisions are similar to those produced by natural cosmic ray collisions in Earth's atmosphere, which have been happening for billions of years without causing harm. Extensive safety assessments, including studies conducted by independent scientific committees, have been conducted to evaluate the potential risks of the LHC. These studies consistently conclude that the LHC experiments are safe and do not pose any danger to Earth or human well-being. As if that wasn't enough, something really concerning happened during one of the experiments at CERN. Some strange quarks were discovered, and some experts feared that if these conditions could create these quarks, there was a high possibility of strangelets forming. Strangelets are particles made up of different types of quarks. Though hypothetical, some people have speculated about the potential risks associated with strangelets. According to them, if strangelets were formed and interacted with the environment, we stand at a great risk. One concern is that stable strangelets could disrupt normal cellular processes if they come into contact with living organisms. They might affect the stability of atomic nuclei in cells, leading to genetic mutations, cellular damage, or cell death. These disruptions could have harmful effects on the health and survival of organisms. Another concern is that stable strangelets could be more durable than normal matter. If they come into contact with normal matter, they might trigger a process called strangelet conversion. This could convert normal matter into strange matter, causing a chain reaction where more and more matter is converted. This conversion could significantly affect the environment, changing the composition and properties of normal matter. As a result, the environment would be greatly affected, with the composition and properties of normal matter being altered. And the implications are that the stability and function of living organisms and the overall balance of the ecosystem will be altered. There will be an uncomfortable change in temperature. Strangelets might also disrupt the stability and structure of atomic nuclei if they could bind with them. This could lead to the formation of new, exotic forms of matter with unpredictable effects on the environment. Also, if stable strangelets were produced in experiments or natural processes, there could be worries about their contamination of the environment. The spread and interaction of strange matter could have unpredictable effects on ecosystems, including impacts on organisms and ecological processes. Stable strangelets could contaminate ecosystems and introduce new chemical reactions and physical processes. This could disrupt the balance of ecosystems and harm organisms. It could also change the composition and properties of matter in the environment, which could affect nutrient availability, energy transfer, 
and ecological interactions. If stable strangelets interacted with organisms at different levels of the food chain, such as plants, herbivores, and predators, it could lead to changes in population dynamics and species interactions. This disruption could have far-reaching effects throughout the ecosystem, potentially affecting biodiversity and the stability of the ecosystem. To counter that, scientists at CERN have thoroughly studied and addressed concerns regarding the production of strangelets through experiments at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC. Based on extensive research and analysis, CERN scientists have concluded that producing stable strangelets is highly unlikely and poses no significant risk. CERN has conducted detailed theoretical and experimental investigations to understand the behavior of quarks and the formation of exotic particles such as strangelets. These studies have consistently shown that the conditions necessary for creating stable strangelets are absent in the LHC experiments. According to the scientific understanding of particle physics, strangelets require specific conditions of temperature, pressure, and energy density to be formed and remain stable. The energy levels generated in the LHC collisions are insufficient to create these conditions, and any hypothetical strangelets produced would be highly unstable and rapidly decay into ordinary particles. Furthermore, CERN scientists have pointed out that cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles from space that have been bombarding Earth for billions of years, have much higher energies than the LHC experiments. If stable strangelets could be produced in nature or through the LHC, they would have already been observed in cosmic ray collisions. Therefore, the absence of evidence for stable strangelets from cosmic ray observations supports the conclusion that their production at the LHC is improbable. To chilling situation escalated when Max Laughlin, one of the youngest brilliant minds in the field of science, made a full video accusing CERN of deliberately trying to destroy our universe and distort our current reality by creating a parallel universe and forcefully plunging us into it using the Large Hadron Collider, LHC. Max's belief is based on the experiments done at CERN with the LHC. The LHC machine uses powerful magnets to study tiny particles and recreate conditions similar to the Big Bang. Max suggests that these experiments may have caused our universe to break apart, leading to us existing in a parallel reality. He also thinks that something unusual might have happened during the experiments in space and time. This could have sent us into an infinite number of parallel universes. Max suggests that the scientists at CERN might have noticed this and tried to change what was happening. This idea challenges what we usually understand about how reality works. Though Max's theories provide an interesting perspective and encourage us to think about the mysteries of our universe, scientists at CERN have outrightly debunked it because they are not supported by scientific evidence and contradict well-established principles of physics. First, scientific theories and claims require robust evidence and observations to support them, and Laughlin's ideas lack such empirical backing. Also, Laughlin's assertions about parallel universes and accidental transportation through the LHC contradict well-established physics principles. The LHC experiments at CERN are carefully designed to study subatomic particles and the fundamental forces of nature. The energies involved in these experiments are far below the levels required to create parallel universes or cause accidental transportation. It is worth noting that CERN takes safety very seriously and implements strict protocols and safeguards to ensure that experiments conducted at the LHC do not pose risks to human life or the environment. Extensive risk assessments have been carried out and the creation of parallel universes has been determined to be highly unlikely. We know that CERN maintains strict safety protocols, but what if their calculations and models are flawed? What if there are undiscovered phenomena at play that their current theories cannot account for? Could these exotic particles be forming and gradually accumulating, setting the stage for a doomsday scenario we cannot foresee? There are many questions to ask with no answers to give. We guess this is the point where we say that time will tell. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Exploring the Mysteries of Our Universe. See you in the next episode. Your subscription and a thumbs up will mean a lot to us, so do well to show your support.